Hi, it's Sunday morning, and I think I've finally come up with a design that I can live with and that I, I really like it, actually. Um, I'm going to start with, uh, so you can see here how the bikes will be. I'll put an, uh, an L-Track logistics track down there and maybe again over there, or maybe I'll just have one removable um, fork mount over there for another bike so that I can get three bikes, two facing this way and one facing that way. Um, three bikes is the most I'll ever take on a trip. I'll have the mountain bike, the road bike, and the fat tire bike. Um, all right, so let me pause this and then I'll pick back up and show you the rest of the inside. All right, another thing that I considered was using um, like a, a two by four wall um, that's about the same size, size as my tailgate so that I can use my tailgate cover um, inside the trailer for a bike mount. Uh, and I could put it on this side or I could put it on this side over here, but I think it'd just be easier to go with fork mounts. So that idea goes away. Um, it is an option that I can consider later though, because it's really easy to build a two by four wall and then stick it up, you know, under there or something. All right. So we'll start at the back. The uh, floor to ceiling uh, kite cabinet has now become a 33, 34 ish inch tall. Um, cabinet that goes uh, 80 inches so 80 by 24 that's plenty of room for kites and then the bed I've gone with a Murphy bed design instead of a loft bed design and I've cut it down from um, 60 inches wide to 48 inches wide um, I could still do the loft bed idea um, it would work just as well um, and I could actually get, you know, I could actually leave it at 60 inches, but um, I think I like this. Um, the loft bed is still an option. Uh, and then on this side, um, so towards the front of the trailer, uh, I would have steps going up to the loft bed so that Endo could get in because he's not going to be able to jump, you know, to be 36 inches up to like a countertop height. Um, I could climb up real easy, but wouldn't be so easy for Endo. All right, so bed, cabinet underneath, opposite wall. I will have a table that um, will be um, hideable. So I'll be able to, I'll probably buy one of those hinges that allow you to uh, fold it down, but for this purposes, it was for the for this mock-up purpose. It was easier to do as a flip up. Um, so this this table is at um, standing desk height because I use a standing desk, um, and then I'll be able to get um, bar stools to fit next to it. So you could easily uh, feed three people at a table this size. Um, and it also flips up out of the way. So, you know, creates that open air space that I like. Um, and uh, I can fit two bar stools. I can have one here, one here, and then me standing. Uh, don't need to have three bar stools because I like to stand anyway. So if I had the granddaughters with me or two other people or whatever, I can have them seated and I can stand. Um, this was the inspiration for this whole setup an island kitchen. So kitchen countertop, 35 inches high. Um, sink will be on this end. I will reuse my existing um, countertop from the van. Uh, the sink will be on this end and I will still be able to use my pull-out drawer that I devised for the van. If you haven't seen that, go back and watch that video. Um, I'll be able to also have cabinet doors on either side, uh, this side or this side. So you'll be able to access everything from either side. Um, I'll have uh, the gray water bottle in here for sure. Um, and then not sure where I'm going to put the water tank. It may go in here. It would certainly fit in here. I reduced this from 60 inches to 42 inches, I think, something like that. So it would have, if I didn't cut it down, it would have come out to like here, and that's just too long. And I don't need that much counter space, so I can I moved it back. Because you can use both sides of the counter space. So if you have two people working, 
then you know there's plenty of room uh, and you know the the sink covers double the counter space basically um, so let me open this up to get a better light up in the very front I have basically a lounge area so I'll have seating across the whole front of the of the trailer and then this area will be you know I'll be able to lounge back in this area put my feet up um, or I can sit up here put my feet up whatever uh, it also gives me the opportunity to put overhead storage up here if I so desire don't think I'll need it because I'll have storage all the way underneath that I can put the batteries up there I could also put the uh, hot water tank up there uh, the only downside is that was that would mean running um, the water lines under the trailer up to the uh, kitchen cabinets um, not a big deal because I can insulate them and I can even use uh, heated tape wrap if I if I need to if I do winter trips um, storage oh I can still do a window here I can still do a window there and I thought I would do two I have two swinging arm TV mounts and I could put one here so that I can have the TV you know, flat up against this wall all right, that was crooked. Uh, flat up against this wall, so when I'm you know, preparing meals or whatever, I can watch whatever on this TV, and it will also swing out so that I can watch it while I'm seated, seated here. And I can also put another swing mount here so that it swings over and I can use it while I'm working at the stand-up desk, or it would swing out so that I can watch while I'm on the patio area sitting waiting for wind or whatever. Um, as for the flooring, I've solved that dilemma. I can go with the very expensive, uh, oh, what do they call it? Luxury vinyl planks for like this section here going you know, even to the door. Um, because this is, it's, it's 1115 right now. And you can see that the sun line is just inside that. And it doesn't really start getting hot until noon-ish. So even if I have direct sunlight, it's not gonna be direct sunlight and heat on a, um, a traditional laminate wood floor uh, planks, if you will, uh, for the rest of the trailer. Um, so I can do both the really expensive stuff here, the less expensive stuff there, and the, um, the ramp door, which will end up being a patio. Um, I can I can explore different opportunities for that. I'm thinking I will go with the more expensive um, vinyl plank because it doesn't expand, it doesn't contract, and it's waterproof, and um, and that's going to get a lot of sunlight all throughout the day. Um, but I can wait for that. I don't need to do that today. Uh, I don't need to do any of this today. But um, the the patio can function as as it is with just plywood um, so that I can see how I'm using it and whether I want to um, put a finished floor on it uh, if I put a finished floor on that then I will also put the same finished floor on that so you'll have basically a it'll look like a separate room um, for the bikes um, that pretty much sums it up I think I've got I think this is it and I don't have to put in a separate um, I don't have to put in a separate uh, fan here because that is not blocked by the bed anymore. When the bed was in the up position in the other configuration, that was completely blocked. So I can just put the max air fan in there. Uh, so that solves yet another problem. And I'm going to, I'll save the piece that I cut off of um, the mattress so that if I do decide to make it a queen size mattress again, I can um, put it back together and expand that and use it however I want it. So that's it.